484 years ago today, the great love of Michelangelo's life wrote him a love poem that would rival any of any straight couple. Hello there, I'm Bruce Tedder and you're watching Today in LGBT History. No matter what the subject, historians don't agree on very much. That's especially true when it comes to Michelangelo's sexuality. But many of his writings and drawings and paintings and sculptures had overtly homosexual overtones. There were accusations in his life and well after up to the present day. But it was never a title that Michelangelo really embraced. But then again, why are titles so important anyway? I guess it's human nature to try to put each other in boxes, to file each other away as stereotypes, but that's not an accurate way to look at people. We're all more than titles. Every single one of us are a lot more complicated than that. But here's what we do know about Michelangelo. He and Tommaso de Cavalieri, apologize for my Italian pronunciation there, they were clearly in love. Over the decades, Michelangelo created tons of artworks dedicated to him. One of my favorite of his sonnets dedicated to Cavalieri says that love is not always a harsh and deadly sin. And that's true, right? Though Cavalieri was 34 years younger than Michelangelo, he clearly returned his affections. On August 2nd of 1533, he wrote to Michelangelo saying, I flee from evil deeds and wish to flee them, for I cannot make love with anyone but you. That's pretty sweet. Despite Michelangelo's apparent homosexual nature, he was one of the most celebrated artists of not only his lifetime, but in history. He worked for a total of nine Catholic popes and designed what's probably the most important Christian church in the world, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. When Michelangelo died in 1564, his devoted lover was by his side. Now, unfortunately, we don't know much about what happens to Cavalieri after this point, but their relationship remains one that we can learn from even today. The love between these two men didn't fit neatly into any box. As is so often the case, titles just weren't sufficient. Now, historians will try to whitewash or worse to even demonize their relationship. But those arguments just aren't fair to the memories of these people. Love is love, and we need to stop trying to put each other into neat boxes that fit our personal narratives. Thanks for watching Today in LGBT History. If you learned something, give us a thumbs up, subscribe for new videos like this every single day. Tomorrow we'll be looking at Rudolf Brazda, who was the last known Holocaust survivor put in a concentration camp for his sexuality.